thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, we are at the tail end of day one, and it is my pleasure to be with you today. To summarize what our wonderful speakers uh, had to say today on our very first day of the conference. But first of all, a big acknowledgement from the Social Innovation Lab team. Uh, it has been very refreshing as innovation practitioners to be with a group of people, uh, virtually though, uh, who share a collective passion for women's inclusion, more specifically in digital finance. Women constitute more than half of the population everywhere, uh, and yet they are not to be covered by formal banking services. But this transition alone may not be the only milepost for us to cover. We have to look at how their financial agency can be unlocked even further by actively empowering them economically. Designing tools which are centered around them and can be used by them independently is something we should be focusing on as well. And a more effective way to address this goal would be to religiously pursue evidence generation, capacity building, and knowledge sharing. The last point is a crucial objective of our conference. So we had a number of speakers today uh, who have stated collectively uh, that digital, final, uh, digital financial inclusion, as we understand it, uh, is not just about getting a smartphone. But going beyond that, uh, it is about helping people to use it, how to connect it with income generating opportunities and so on. And exactly this is why, as Shaman Bhai has cautioned, that neither microfinance nor mobile money would be the only silver bullet here. We need to understand what the problems are. Financial services by themselves will not get us very far because you have to have things to buy with it. So ensuring access to education, access to healthcare, and access to proper market systems, essentially ensuring access to things you need to get your livelihoods up and running is very crucial. But the traditional model of microfinance, which has been a powerful tool so far, uh, would need to adapt. This is something that Greta reinforced. Uh, for example, a radical idea that was put forward uh, is that group lending uh, might be outdated and it might be more important for providers uh, than the borrowers. They believe that the joint liability model of group lending uh, probably does not work anymore and can be easily replaced with digitized credit history uh, for better outcomes for everyone. What Greta suggested uh, that the trick is figuring out what the value proposition is and over time finding the products that are actually going to add value to people's lives. Uh, what both Shamir and Bhai and Greta agreed on uh, is that graduating to higher usage rate requires showcasing use cases, which lies in savings and credit, and not in providing one-time incentives anymore. And that is where small and big innovations need to come together to push the ball. But, but, but the biggest ally in this quest of ours is certainly our clients themselves. Uh, as Shamir and Bhai has said, in Bragg's 50 years of practice, we learned that if we put tools in the hands of women, we don't have to worry too much because most women invest in the right things very responsibly. They don't go and spend money in the wrong way. They just get stuff done. But to really leverage this strength, we need to marry the convenience and safety of using digital money to drive usage rate especially when it comes to women. Now, all these design principles become more apparent once we put really smart people like our speakers and attendees in pursuing this cause. But our design efforts cannot and should not be homogeneous. As Greta pointed out, and rightly so, product designs as well as solutions provided should be contextualized and meet people where they are. And this created a perfect segue to our second session of the day, where one of our panelists, Emmanuel, reinforce the power of empathy and human-centered design. Understanding different women clientele is key. When we are designing, we also have to be mindful of the most efficient delivery channels, the best form of language to communicate and what makes the product more accessible to women. And while value proposition is a core tenet, stickability is something that the social media platforms were able to ensure very smoothly in their operations. So one of our panelists, Sakiv Bhai from TikTok, mentioned that the stickability should not be copied mindlessly, but work must be done in reducing barriers and making our designs easier to be used by our clients. Now, businesses would be able to meet communities more easily when we would be able to build on digital experiences that are already showing traction with women producers and making use of those digital behaviors. Priyanka was a big supporter of this. But having said that, uh, beyond the bottom lines, our panelists have agreed that safety and security of our clients should be baked into all the designs that we do. The spread of information, misinformation, and malinformation has been a concern over the internet. And client education plays a big role in helping our clients spot mis misinformation uh, from a true fact. But the topic of effective client education has been debated. 
so Smita, one of our speakers from a workshop later in the day, the main challenge still remained on convincing clients that digitization is a good thing. Simply increasing the number of women is not enough for active engagement and participation, but the needs of women should be taken into careful consideration when designing materials and activities. Reinforcing those learnings is a key thing that we have to ensure. Now, transitioning from conversation on client education, keeping solutions on gender intentional is not only about being monolithic about a certain gender group, so it's crucial that the practitioners build that gender muscle and be aware of how gender plays a big part in the designing process. So with that note, uh, today was an outstanding example where we have received a torrent of ideas, statistics and big visions. But tomorrow promises even better things where we have a great range of workshops and panels ready for you, where we promise to be equally engaging, but maybe even more. So thank you for being with us. Again, a small reminder to use the hashtag ScaleFrugal when you uh, talk about the conference online. And it has been a pleasure to be with you today. See you all tomorrow. Thank you.